I'm Emma, a 34-year-old photographer who recently became a full-time mom. My world, which used to be framed by the camera lens, now revolved around a tiny lump of joy sleeping in the next room. But beneath the surface of this newfound motherhood, something was wrong. The house, our once favorite sanctuary, seemed an empty echo of its former self. The grandeur of the terrace, where Alex and I shared dreams over morning coffee, now seemed a mockery of emptiness. The garden we'd carefully tended was silent, a testament to the growing emptiness between us. I still remember the day I came home from the hospital with our baby boy in my arms. I expected warmth, tears of joy, something, anything. Instead, Alex met us with a look that barely concealed indifference. Darling, aren't you glad? Say hello to your son, I asked, trying to hide the tremor in my voice. Alex barely looked at our baby. His eyes didn't have the sparkle I knew before. Yeah, he's... he's great. I'm just not good with babies, you know. Give me time. It wasn't just the kid. The Alex I knew, the Alex I fell in love with, he just disappeared. Every day he came home from work, a mask of tiredness on his face, his words sparse and empty. One night, as I was rocking our son, the silence became unbearable. Alex, we need to talk. There's such distance between us, and it's not just about the baby, is it? He sighed, his attention fixed on some distant point beyond the walls of our once happy home. Emma, don't start. I'm tired. Work is a mess. I don't need another lecture. I felt anger mixed with a little fear. A lecture, Alex? Look at us. Look at our family. You're a father now, and I'm... I feel like I'm doing this alone. He finally looked at me, his eyes cold, detached. What do you want from me, Emma? A parade? I'm here, I'm working, I'm providing. What more do you want? The words stung, each one a reminder of the chasm that had formed between us. I want you, Alex, the man I married, the man who promised to be by my side, not a shadow haunting this house. He stood up, his disappointment obvious. I can't deal with this right now. I'm not the enemy, Emma. Maybe you're the one who's changed. Life after bringing our son home wasn't the blissful picture I had painted in my mind. It was more like a puzzle with pieces that didn't quite fit. Alex, the man I vowed to spend my life with, was the piece that had shifted the most. His late nights at work were becoming a pattern, a repeat of a past I thought we had buried deep. One chilly evening, as I cradled our son, trying to soothe his fussiness, the sound of the front door creaking open broke the monotony. Alex walked in his face drawn, his eyes avoiding mine. Back late again, huh? I said, my voice laced with a tiredness that went beyond physical. Alex just grunted, tossing his keys on the table. Work's a mess. You wouldn't understand. The sharpness in his tone stung. Wouldn't understand, Alex? I've been there. Remember the late nights in the studio, the deadlines? I get it. But this is different. You're different. He scoffed, loosening his tie with a jerk. Different? How? Because I'm trying to provide for this family, because I'm not jumping with joy every minute? I bit back the retort that sprung to my lips, choosing my words carefully. It's not about providing, Alex. It's about being present. You barely look at your son. You barely talk to me. It's like you're here, but you're not. He looked at me then, his eyes hard. What do you want from me, Emma? I'm working my ass off every day coming home to this, he gestured vaguely around the room, and all I get is complaints. The hurt was raw, real. Complaints? Is that what you think this is, Alex? I'm worried about us, about you. I see how you avoid us, how you're pulling away. It reminds me, it reminds me of before. The air turned icy. Alex's face tightened, his jaw clenching. You're bringing that up again? I thought we were past that, Emma. I thought we agreed to leave that behind. I held our son closer, his small warmth a stark contrast to the chill between us. Leave it behind? How can I, Alex, when you're acting just like you did back then? Late nights, the distance, the silence, it's all too familiar. He threw up his hands, frustration radiating off him. So what, you think I'm cheating again? Is that it? You think I haven't changed? The question hung in the air, heavy and unwelcome. I don't know, Alex. I don't know what to think. All I know is that something's not right and it's tearing us apart. 
He ran a hand through his hair, a telltale sign of his stress. Tearing us apart? Maybe it's your constant accusations. Ever thought of that? Maybe it's you who's not letting us move forward. And just like that, he left the room, leaving behind a silence that was louder than any argument. It was just another Monday afternoon when my phone buzzed with a notification, a message from someone I didn't recognize. Curiosity peaked. I opened it, not knowing that those few lines were about to shatter the fragile piece of my world. Emma, you don't know me, but I think it's time you did. Alex has been living a double life, and I'm the other woman. My heart stopped. This had to be some sick joke. But then I saw the pictures attached. Alex, not just with this woman, but with children. Three of them, each bearing a resemblance to the man I called my husband. I was still reeling from the shock when Alex walked in earlier than usual. Back so soon, I managed to say, my voice a mere whisper. He shrugged, clearly oblivious to the storm raging inside me. Yeah, things were slow at the office. I held up my phone, the picture of him with that woman and the children filling the screen. Slow, huh? Is this how you kill time? His face went white, the mask of indifference crumbling in an instant. Emma, where did you get this? The words felt heavy, each one a stone sinking in the pit of my stomach. From her, Alex, your, your other woman. He tried to grab the phone, but I pulled away, my eyes never leaving his. So it's true then, the late nights, the distance. It wasn't just work, it was them. Alex sank into a chair, his facade shattered. Emma, listen, it's not what you think I laughed, a hollow sound that echoed in the silence. Not what I think, Alex. The pictures don't lie. You have a whole other family. How long? How long have you been lying to me? He buried his face in his hands, a defeated figure. A few years. It started small. I didn't mean for it to go this far. A few years? The words hung in the air, a testament to the lie my life had become. And the children, Alex, are they yours? He didn't answer, but he didn't need to. The truth was right there in the silence, in the photos, in the years of deceit. You need to leave, Alex. Now, I said, my voice steady despite the chaos inside. And with that, he left, the sound of the closing door marking the end of our story. I sat there alone, holding our son, the only real thing in the mess that was my life. Just when the dust seemed to be settling, life decided to throw another curveball. I was in the middle of a feeding session with my son when the doorbell rang, slicing through the quiet of the afternoon. Expecting maybe a delivery or a neighbor, I was completely taken aback to see Alex looking sheepish, and a woman I recognized from the photos, the other woman, standing boldly in my doorway. Before I could even react, she pushed past me into the house, her eyes roaming around, taking in every detail of the home I had put my heart into. This is quite the place you've got here, Emma. Cozy and spacious. Perfect for a family, don't you think, Alex? She said, her voice dripping with a mix of mockery and entitlement. Alex didn't meet my gaze, his shame evident, but his voice silent. I clenched my jaw, trying to keep my composure in the face of this intrusion. And what family would that be? Because the last time I checked, this was my home, I retorted, standing protectively in front of my son's crib, she smirked, a calculated glint in her eye. Well, the family Alex should have been with all along, me and our three kids. You see, we need this house more than you do, a big, beautiful house for a big family. You understand, right? The audacity of her words struck a nerve. I was fuming, each word from her mouth fueling my anger. Understand? I understand perfectly. You're delusional if you think you can just barge in here and lay claim to what's mine. Alex has no right to this house, and neither do you, I spat. Alex finally spoke, his voice barely a whisper. Emma, maybe we should discuss this. Discuss? I snapped, my patience wearing thin. You think after everything, we're just going to sit down and have a chat about you handing over my house to your mistress and your other children? The woman paced around, her eyes scanning the room like a hawk. Look, Emma, it's simple. You've got one kid, a small apartment will do. We've got three. We need the space. It's only fair, she said. Fair, the word echoed in my mind, a cruel joke in the face of everything that was happening. 
Fair? You want to talk about fair? There's nothing fair about betrayal, about lies, about breaking a family. You have no idea what fair is, I said, turning to Alex, seeking affirmation. Tell her, Alex. Tell her we'll be moving in. She's got a week to clear out. Alex avoided my gaze, his shoulder slumped, the picture of defeat and cowardice. Emma, I... I don't know what to say, Alex muttered. The standoff was tense, the air thick with unsaid words and unspoken threats. But as they left, the woman throwing a spiteful glance over her shoulder and Alex not even daring to look back, I knew that this was far from over. After the door slammed shut behind Alex and his mistress, I was left standing in the silence of my home, my mind racing. The nerve of them coming into my house, threatening to take everything I held dear. But as the initial shock subsided, a plan began to form. It was time to reveal the truth, time to claim what was rightfully mine. The doorbell rang, its chime echoing like the start of a showdown. There they stood, Alex looking more defeated than ever, and his mistress, her arrogance undiminished. Time's up, Emma. We're here to move in. Did you pack your stuff? She demanded, her eyes gleaming with triumph. I stood in the doorway, my stance firm. Actually, I didn't pack, and you're not moving in. This house is mine, and I have the documents to prove it, I said. The woman's face faltered, confusion mixing with her anger. What are you talking about? This is Alex's house, too. We have rights, she protested. I couldn't help but smirk, the tables finally turning. No, you see, that's where you're wrong. This house was a gift from my parents to me. Alex's name isn't on any of the documents. He has no claim over this property, I declared. Alex shifted uncomfortably, avoiding my gaze. Emma, I... I thought we could work something out, he mumbled. Work something out? After you cheated, lied, and then tried to kick me and your son out of our home? I don't think so, I retorted. The woman interjected, her voice shrill with panic. This can't be happening. You're lying, Alex. Tell her she's lying. But Alex remained silent. His head hung low, the truth of the situation finally dawning on him. It's not a lie, I said, my voice steady. This house is mine, and you have no legal right to be here, so I suggest you leave before I call the police. The woman's eyes darted to Alex, seeking confirmation or maybe denial, but Alex stood silent, his shoulders slumped into defeat. Emma, I, I don't know what to say, he finally muttered. The standoff was tense, the air thick with tension and unsaid words. But as they turned to leave, the woman's parting glance was filled with venom and vows of revenge. This isn't the end, Emma. You'll regret this, she hissed, her dreams shattered by the harsh light of truth. It was a crisp morning, the kind that usually promised a peaceful start. But peace was a luxury I could no longer afford. The sound of the doorbell shattered the calm like a rock through a window. As I opened the door, my heart sank. There she stood, Alex's mistress, her face twisted into a smirk, her children huddled behind her. You've got some nerve showing up here again, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. The mistress didn't falter. I've got every right, Emma. These kids, she gestured to the innocent faces behind her, they deserve a proper home. Your home. I couldn't help but scoff. Deserve? The only thing you deserve is a reality check. This is my house and you're not welcome here. Heartless? I'm not the one tearing families apart, disrupting lives. You did that all on your own, I countered. The neighbors, drawn by her shrill voice, had begun to gather, their whispers like a chorus in the background. She relished the audience, her theatrics reaching new heights. Look at this, folks. Emma here thinks she's too good to share, thinks this palace is only for her and her baby. What about my children? Don't they deserve a home too? She exclaimed, stepping closer, her eyes flashing with anger. You think you can judge me? Emma, you who had everything handed to her on a silver platter. My kids have had to fight for every little thing in their lives, and now you want to deny them a roof over their heads? I shook my head in disbelief, anger swirling inside me, I'm not denying them anything. Their father, the man you stole from me, he's the one you should be looking at. He's the one who's failed them, and you, the mistress, I said. Her face reddened, her mouth opening and closing like a fish out of water. Alex promised us a better life. He promised we'd have this house. Are you going to stand there and tell me those were all lies? 
Her words hung heavy in the air, a painful reminder of Alex's betrayal. Promises from Alex aren't worth much these days, it seems. But one thing's for sure, this house isn't part of his empty promises. It's mine, and you have no claim to it, I asserted. She bristled, her composure slipping. I'm not leaving, Emma. Not until you do right by these kids. I'll camp out here if I have to. I'll make sure everyone knows what kind of cold-hearted witch lives in this mansion, she threatened. I stared at her, the absurdity of the situation hitting me full force. You're going to camp out on my property? I don't think so. This is your last warning. Leave now or I'll call the police, I warned. Her eyes darted around at the gathered neighbors, serving as her audience, but the resolve in my voice must have hit a nerve. She gathered her children, her parting shot a venomous glare. This isn't over, Emma. You think you've won, but you've just started a war. The drama of the previous week still hung heavy in my home like a cloud refusing to move on. I was Emma, a woman who thought she had seen it all, until the doorbell rang again, bringing a chapter I thought I had closed. There he was, Alex, standing on my doorstep, his face a mixture of regret and desperation. The sight of him after everything sparked a fury I hadn't known I possessed. What are you doing here, Alex? Haven't you done enough? I spat, my words sharp and unforgiving. He looked down, his hands fidgeting nervously. Emma, I... I need to talk to you. It's important, he stammered. I crossed my arms, my stance unyielding. Talk after you tried to take my home? After all the lies? You must be kidding, I retorted. He swallowed hard, a man grasping at straws. Please, Emma, I made a mistake, a huge mistake. I see that now. I was wrong, so wrong, he pleaded. I couldn't help but laugh, the sound bitter and hollow. A mistake? Is that what you call it? You destroyed our family, Alex. You chose her, chose that life, and now you're here asking for forgiveness? I demanded, my voice rising with every word. He nodded, a desperate man clinging to a lifeline. Yes, Emma, I know I don't deserve it, but I want to try. I'll do anything, everything to make it up to you, to our son, he implored. I shook my head, the finality of my decision clear in my mind. It's too late, Alex. You made your choice, and now you have to live with it. We are moving on without you, I declared. His shoulders slumped, defeat etched into every line of his face. Emma, please don't do this. Think of our son. He needs his father, he pleaded. I felt a pain in my heart for the life we could have had, for the family that was broken beyond repair. He needs his father, and where were you? With her? With them? You're not the man we need, Alex. It's time you realize that, I said firmly. He stood there for a moment longer, a man lost in the ruins of his own making. Then, without another word, he turned and walked away, his figure disappearing into the night. The final pieces of my old life had fallen away leaving space for something new, something mine. The divorce papers were signed, and Alex was now just a person from my past, a shadow that no longer darkened my door. He was ordered to pay alimony for our son, a small justice in the grand scheme of things. Sitting in my quiet living room, I reflected on the tumultuous journey. The phone buzzed, breaking the silence. It was Lisa, her voice carrying the latest gossip. Hey, Emma, you won't believe this. Alex and his mistress are crammed into a tiny apartment. Word is they do nothing but fight day in and day out, she said. I couldn't help but feel a twinge of vindication. Well, can't say I'm surprised. You reap what you sow, right? I replied. Lisa chuckled. True that. How are you holding up, though? All this must be tough, she asked. I took a sip of my tea, its warmth comforting. It's been a ride, Lisa, but I'm getting there. Each day feels a bit lighter, a bit more mine, I answered. You're the strongest person I know, Emma. And hey, if you need anything, I'm just a call away, all right? She reassured me. Her words were a balm, soothing the lingering sting of the past. Thanks, I really appreciate it, I said sincerely. The conversation drifted to lighter topics, a welcome change. After hanging up, I gazed around the room. This was my space, my sanctuary. The battles fought within these walls had left scars, but they were healing, turning into stories of strength and resilience. I picked up my camera, an old friend I had neglected. The weight of it in my hands felt right. I snapped a few pictures of the room, 
of my son's toys, of the life that was slowly piecing itself back together. Each click of the shutter was a declaration, a statement that while the past was a part of me, it didn't define me. As I put my son to bed that night, his tiny hand clutching my finger, I whispered promises of a future bright and unburdened. Outside, the stars twinkled, a vast canvas of possibilities stretching out before us. Alex and his mistress were just a chapter closed, a lesson learned. Our story, the one that truly mattered, was just beginning, and it was going to be a beautiful one.